Phasmophobia is defined as the fear of ghosts, an intense fear of ghosts if you will. Now, currently, Phasmophobia is an early access title taking your Steam friends list and everybody you follow on Twitch by storm, let's be honest here. So given it's a spooky season and that Halloween's coming up, I thought, you know what, we'll review the game Phasmophobia and see what all the hype's about. Now, quick disclaimer, I don't usually review early access games just because it means having to do another review down the line. This is one of those games that I can definitely make an exception for because it's a quick flash in the pan I feel. So let's take a look at the specs for this game versus my computer first and foremost. This game wants an i5-4590 or a Ryzen 5 1500X as well as a GTX 970 or AMD R9 290 and 8GB of RAM. I still have a 290 in my bedroom. Now I myself run a 7700K, a GTX 1080 and 32GB of RAM. Now when you look at this there's a generational gap that's for sure. There's three CPU generations and one GPU generation between these specs if you will. And of course by the time this game comes out of early access both sets of specifications could have changed. Now let's get on to the story of this game because quite frankly there's no story. It's a premise. You and an optional three other people go into a place that's being haunted and try to find out which type of ghost you're dealing with so the real ghost hunters can come in and actually deal with it. It's actually really simple when you think about it. Right, well, yeah. Take a look at the <coughs> the oh. Thomas White. Damn White. Dos crucifixios. Oh, oh, motion sensor. In response to people who are alone, you shouldn't use its name to piss it off, which I'm is normal. Taking, taking a boat. <laughs> Mate, there's a bone. You got the picture of the bone then? I do. It just flickered the lights by us. Fuck off. Hey, let's just get a Ouija board and a bone. <sighs> I heard that. It whispered in my- it was so close to my ear. I heard that. <sighs> this is where the problems start though. Each type of ghost is different, some are really active, some are really dormant. Now it's you and your optional friend's jobs to clear the tasks and the board and the truck for some extra money, and the first job is always to ascertain the type of ghost that you're dealing with. That is easier said than done, even though you've got a myriad of tools to help you. Each ghost is different and ghosts can be stubborn. Even though it's a game, it's the atmosphere we're really here for because the atmosphere is on point and I have to give the developers their due for that. Unfortunately though, like what I said in my Descenders review will still hold true here. When your game's got a backseat or non-existent story, your gameplay has to go above and beyond. So let's take a look at the gameplay, shall we? I'm not too sure about you lot, but I've never actually done a task for so long and enjoyed it so much. From this game's perspective, on the outside looking in, it's actually really boring. If you're to sit and stream this game with no microphone and no face cam, you've also got no viewers at that point. I want to quickly elaborate on you. So, initially you're in the van, and you load up with three items, run out of the house, asylum, school or roadhouse, that's the type of maps that they have. You place these items, and you try to get a reading on what you're dealing with. Now you can sit there for a good half hour and have absolutely nothing happen. So what do you do? You run out of the house and you just start screaming at the ghost to see if it'll give you a sign. Back door, I got well, two. So there were two or a three back there. Oh, You're sitting at a three activity. Yeah, piano player. Aye, we're in the room with the piano. Yeah. Come up, come here, come here, come here. Get the EMF it. Yeah, two. Two. The crucifix, too. Crucifix. Here. Right, oh, here. you fucking legend, let's roll! But was that sign actually helpful? Essentially, is what the ghost done help you to narrow down the type of ghost you're hunting? It's probably not, let's be honest here, because in the event that it does give you something useful, you need another two types of evidence to actually ascertain specifically the ghost you're dealing with. You get three types of evidence and you get 12 different ghosts. Every type of ghost, if you will, they share two evidence and they always have one differing evidence. So if you get an EMF reading, you've not really narrowed down the type of ghost you're dealing with in half an hour's time. Now of course everybody's got to start somewhere I'm pretty sure. So you can go out of the house with your limited gear and potentially find out the type of ghost you're dealing with or you can just go in, collect some evidence, get some stuff, go out, get some better equipment and nail the ghost each time. Having two video cameras in key positions is one thing but if you've got six cameras around the area, salt to find the footsteps, crucifixes to stop the hunting, a book for it to write in, a motion and sound detector in sight of the camera so that you can see movement of the ghost or you just wandered into most haunted territory you have. Now there's cutting around the house with a thousand dollars strapped to your belt like your bat 
Batman, you're going to be asked to distinguish the ghost, and each ghost does have its own characteristics. These characteristics can, however, cause a little bit of confusion. In that half hour you've been hunting it, you can assume that if the ghost has only shown its presence once, it's a shade. They're described as extremely shy, making it hard to detect. You'll see that in your journal. When you weigh up all your evidence that you have, which could only be one piece, and shade is there, you're going to gravitate towards shade, am I right? But here's the thing, a shade's really similar to a Yuri. They both share the evidence of ghost writing and ghost orbs, so any rash move at the beginning of the game, like smudging a room, can cause a false positive like this. Fear does make us do stupid things, and given that when a ghost starts a hunt, it's lethal, stupid actions become really understandable really quickly. Now at the 12 ghosts, they all have the same phenomenon with slight variants. They can throw a cup, throw a photo, they can make all the water go dirty in the sink, they can trip all the power, they can slam doors, they, but they do it all differently. Poltergeists do this far more frequently than say an Oni. The key difference is that the Oni is far more likely to kill you within the first 10 minutes. Ghosts can also be territorial, which is great when the gin is defined as territorial. This is why I try to guess the ghost can be a little hard sometimes. Sometimes he's going to walk into the kitchen and a hunt starts every time. The evidence amounts to a spirit box, ghost orbs, and you assume you're dealing with the gin because you don't quite have the third evidence, but you're going off the fact that it's territorial around the kitchen. Then you were fighting a mare the entire time. I did touch a little bit of this in earlier, but you are given an arsenal of equipment to assist you with your hunt. Whereas Batman's got the belt, you've got the van, stocked full of equipment that you can easily lose. Now you do need to buy all this equipment in at the beginning of the game at the lobby and it stays with you until you die. And technically speaking all of this equipment should make finding the ghost easier but the truth is you can often have it trapped in a room and you just use the equipment to make sure it stays there. Now naturally you've got your cameras, your readers, your torches and your quote unquote spirit box and this is just the starter gear that you get as soon as you click play. Soon you will build this up over time though and by the end of it you're only missing a camera crew that's documenting your trials and tribulations. Some of the objects in this game like the parabolic microphone are only used in larger maps but those maps you really do need it as they are quite hard. Every map also has at least one default camera on the porch or a security system that you can access from your van depending upon the map. These maps also have breaker boxes as some ghosts do like it dark. You may also have to find a small bone and take a photo of it and pick it up, that's a little bit of easy money. You can also find Ouija boards and take a photo of that, or you can actually communicate with the ghost with it. You do got to be careful though that is going to drain your sanity. Speaking of your sanity, you do want to watch it closely as you're going to become a greater target for the ghost when your sanity is low, and it also lets you see things teammates don't, such as other flickering lights and more apparitions of the ghost if you will. So if you pop a sanity pill every now and then, that's going to help, but some ghosts do drain sanity faster than others. You can also talk to the ghost using the spirit box, which is essentially just a portable AM radio, and if the ghost talks back, that is one thing for the journal. Be mindful though that just like Google, this game is always listening, so don't swear because ghosts hate it when you walk out of their room shouting Margaret you fucking bastard, show your fucking face Oh, she's hunting Yep, on a 10 She's still in the dining room I can't. You got a photo here mate, good shit Yep, no Mate, she's been running me, can you get down here and pump her? <laughs> she got fucked I did not know, I'm dead Again I'm dead oh. again no! What do you mean can I get down here and pump her? There's not much I can do. So let's go on to the performance. We've spent so long talking about the gameplay, I feel I've actually neglected the performance. And first and foremost, this is the Unity Engine game, meaning it runs really good. And the biggest issue with Unity is lazy developers, which I don't think is a problem here. The game runs well and I didn't actually have to tweak anything. I was getting over 100 FPS in most maps. There are a few little dips I got in larger maps, but it was never below 60 unless I was watching other streamers in the background. Larger maps will cause frame drops due to the amount of additional props and polygons that have been loaded in, but it's not major. Given that many early access games are just alpha builds of the game, it's surprising to see this game get so much TLC put into it so early, which is actually reassuring that the game will only get better. Unfortunately, I can't really speak with the VR support in this game, as one, I don't have a VR headset, two, I don't wish to play a VR game like this, and three, I don't have the money to facilitate buying that much fucking underwear a week. Given that it's early access, but given that I've also played a ton of VR games, what I would assume is that the functions are there, and they're practically already at their pinnacle, and any updates would just be quality of life over anything else. But overall it is solid, I can't say I've encountered any game breaking bugs in the 20 hours I've played it and that may seem like a small number but I played it for 4 days solid so you know, I would just come off the session like that. As well as that, there's only a small map pool and levelling up is really easy, you're going to play the same 5 or so maps in different difficulties and given that it's an early access game we are going to get more maps in the future, it's just a bit of a waiting game. To sum it up in one word that's practically perfect, I've not been able to find any issues with this game. Ah uh, yeah, it's basically bare bones and it is repetitive and that can seem a little boring, but it is still quite perfect. Future updates can cause scores to decrease once it hits the gold master, but until then, I've got no gripes. 
So with praise like that, there's got to be a score to go with it, right? Story 8, performance 10, gameplay 10, overall 9.3 out of 10. The story or premise, if you will, is unique. In the grand scheme of things, it's definitely different. Every Halloween there is one game that always gets everyone, and this year it happens to be Phasmophobia. A four-player co-op game with single player and VR is checking off many boxes, and though it's lacking in some places, the uniqueness of the game does lend itself to a great viewing experience on Twitch, especially if the player scales easily. There have been similar concepts done before but in different ways, and this one is definitely unique. Similar games that come to mind are games like Damned, an early access game that's unfortunately damned in the way it is because the development has just ceased on it and Dead by Daylight, however those games have you trying to escape the ghost or the demon, whereas in this one you're actively trying to hunt it out. When you sprinkle into this concoction some optimised performance you could be mistaken for thinking it was a full release. Given the full RRP price of £11 and the lack of content you could also think that it's just a little indie game, but it's polished and it works. Improvements in larger maps could be made, but that would just be quality of life and frankly 100 FPS is still 100 FPS, it's plenty for most people. The touch in this game's got to start you on a long road to addiction and I can't tell you how easily it is just to sink hours into this game. In the past two days I've already managed to sink half my playtime into it and it was 100% worth it. Especially when you sit and play it with friends, it's going to cut through much of the fear and tension when it comes to this game. That is until the ghost starts hunting and then it's every man, woman and child for themselves. Now, the game does rely on some jump scares but I'm going to be honest here, I'm not a ghost hunter, I don't quite know how ghosts work, however that is more than likely how they would work. But the scares do mainly come from the audio cues more than anything else, there's nothing more unsettling than walking down a corridor talking to your friend and all you hear is <sighs> in your ear. The ghost models as well are just a little unsettling to look at, however if anything that's a praise on how well the game actually is. I do feel that they may be Unity assets more than anything, I did email the developers about it but they didn't get back to me. Anyway it is a good game and I do recommend you pick it up, if you do, get some friends, you'll have a laugh. Anyway troops that's it for me. I'm not going to tell you to like, comment and subscribe because that's not me, but if you stay, cheers for that. If don't, I'll catch you in a bit shaggle.